Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogg here with our monthly series that puts dividend cash flow in your pocket every single week. We've highlighted weekly dividend stocks before, but it can be overwhelming putting an entire portfolio together all at once. Instead, for this series, I'll show you four dividend stocks to buy each month that are going to create that constant cash flow. I want to get started with Citizens Financial Group, ticker CFG, and its 5.7% dividend yield and then I'll show you how to find these next. Nation, I've been picking through the wreckage of the bank stocks lately to find the deals, and even though Citizens is down 32% from its February peak, it's a sound bank with rebound potential. Net interest income was up 51% last year on higher profitability, and management is expecting another 10% plus in growth this year. And the bank's return on tangible common equity, that core return metric for banks, is 16.4% with a target of 17% this year. And before the crisis, deposits were up 26 billion dollars last year, up 17%, though I do expect a drop when the Q1 is reported soon. The deposit mix is broadly spread out though, seen in this pie chart at the bottom here, with 28% in demand deposits, so citizens might not lose quite as much in deposits as some of the other regional banks. In fact, looking at this chart by Visual Capitalist, we see that citizens has one of the lowest percentages of deposits uninsured. The average percent of deposits uninsured across all banks is around 51%, with citizens here below US Bank, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs. Shares of CFG usually go ex-dividend the first week of May, so if you're gonna buy this stock, don't wait too long, or you're gonna have to wait to the next dividend to get it. Now, we're just getting started on our weekly dividend stocks list, but I wanna explain how this works to put together that weekly dividend portfolio. We're going to be using the historical data tab here on Yahoo Finance to find dividend stocks for each stock and understand that the dates here are the ex-dividend dates. Remember that ex-dividend date is the first day the stock trades without the dividend. So to get that next dividend, you got to buy the stock on the day before this date. Also though, this isn't going to be the day the dividend hits your investment account. The payment date usually comes about 10 days to a couple of weeks after that ex-dividend date. Owning stocks that go ex-dividend in different weeks, though, just means when those dividends do get paid, you're going to have that stream of weekly cash flow to pay the bills. So each month, I'm going to show you another list of four dividend stocks. And, and here, I'm not implying you should just jump in and out of these stocks just to get that one dividend. These are great long-term dividend payers that are going to keep that cash flowing. I just want to point out when you need to buy these if you're going to get that next dividend paid. Balancing that risk in bank stocks is a safety play here, Duke Energy, ticker DUK, and its 4% dividend yield. Duke serves over 8 million customers in 6 states across the southeast and another 1.6 million customers for natural gas. It won't make you rich, but this is definitely a slow and steady stock, with management forecasting 5-7% to annual earnings growth through 2027. That earnings growth combines with the dividend for a 10% annual return, a very solid return on a safety stock within regulated utilities. Shares usually go ex-dividend here on the second week of May, around the 12th of the month, so you still have a couple of weeks, but pick this one up early so you don't forget. Now, I use that data from Yahoo Finance to set up our list because it's freely available to anyone, but I also want to highlight some of the premium research I use from Seeking Alpha. On every dividend stock page, you're going to find an easy scoring system for safety, growth, yield, and payment consistency. One of the most important tabs here, dividend safety, you're going to find the dividend and payout ratio along with cash flow growth and every metric you need to make sure that dividend payment is sustainable. You'll even be able to see the stock's payout ratio history, so if it's trending higher, you can get out before that dividend cut. And something you won't find anywhere else in the dividend estimates tab, analyst forecasts for dividends three years out. This is the only source to show you exactly what to expect from your dividend stocks. Check out the link I'll leave in the description below for an exclusive offer. Save more than 58% for Seeking Alpha Premium, just $8 a month. So look for that link below, check that out because it is the lowest price for premium access you'll ever find. Our next stock not only pays a 5.8% dividend, but has increased it for more than 64 years. Shares of 3M, ticker MMM. Now shares have slumped almost 30% over the last year on slowing sales growth and just a general market sell-off in these conglomerate stocks. It seems investors just don't want these big hodgepodge companies anymore. And 3M is just that, with its four segments, from industrial products, which is about a third of total sales, to electronics, healthcare, which is about 24% of sales, and consumer products. While the company has increased the dividend for 64 straight years, it's only been at a rate of about 1.8% annually over the last five years. But now we get to that upside and why I think shares could get a bump this year and next.
Like many conglomerates, 3M is spinning off its healthcare business into a new company by the end of the year. We've already seen shares of General Electric and its spinoff GE Healthcare both surge this year, up 40% after its spinoff in January. That's against a stock market that's up just 7% on the year. So if you own shares of 3M, when that spinoff occurs, you're going to get the shares of that new company automatically. And here's where it gets really interesting. We've talked about how stocks generally rise leading up to that spinoff and how the new company usually does well for up to a year afterwards on returns. Now, a lot of this is due to the conglomerate discount for valuation, and 3M is a perfect example. Okay, now bear with me because this is really interesting how it could work out for investors. Shares of 3M trade for a price to earnings of 10.4 times. But if you look at what would be a competitor for that healthcare business, shares of Baxter International trade for 20 times on that PE basis. The idea here is that those earnings generated by the 3M healthcare segment trade at a discount because it's locked inside the big, unwieldy conglomerate. But once the segment spins off and starts trading alone, those earnings could start trading not at 10.4 times valuation, but at closer to that 20 times industry average. Think about it this way. Earnings for all of 3M last year were $10.10 per share, and the stock trades for about $104 per share, or about 10.4 times those earnings. Now let's say earnings from the healthcare segment were 24% of that, or about $2.42 per share, while the rest of 3M generated $7.68 in EPS. So in the spinoff, you'd still have that 3M stock generating $7.68 in per share earnings and valued at 10.4 times on that price to earnings, or around $80 a share. You would also have that healthcare stock though, generating that $2.42 in earnings, but the shares would trade closer to that industry average for healthcare products, say a 20 times PE, or about $48.40 a share. Put these two together, and you're gonna have a combined stock price of $128 each, 22% higher than the current combined company. Now, I am not saying that's exactly how the valuation is gonna come out, and earnings will change over the next year, but it's just an example of how these spinoffs do create shareholder return through those higher valuations. It's a solid short-term upside, plus that already strong dividend yield, but if you want to get the upcoming dividend, you're going to need to buy, buy the shares before the ex-dividend date around May 19th. It's not quite the dividend king that 3M is, but Prudential Financial, ticker PRU, with its 6% yield, has increased its own payout for 15 years. In fact, I recently highlighted Prudential as one of the safest stocks in the market with our perfect dividend portfolio series. Check out that video here. The cash flows in life insurance are extremely predictable, helping to smooth out the volatility in the company's investment management and its retirement annuities products. While the U.S. segment is 60% of the revenue, Prudential is also a market leader in Japan and has a strong presence in Brazil with about 39% of its earnings internationally, so you've got that solid diversification in some of the growth in emerging markets. Now, of course, shares have fallen along with everything in the financial sector on those worries for the falling bond values in the fixed income portfolio, but Prudential has all the liquidity it needs to push through and maintain that dividend. Beyond the $1.8 billion in dividends paid last year, the company also paid back $1.1 billion in debt and still had enough free cash flow to buy back over $2.5 billion in shares. It's generating all the cash flow it needs, and Prudential has grown that dividend by 6% annually over the last five years. The sell-off has brought the shares down to just eight times on a PE basis, half the price multiple it traded at over the last five years. Now, Prudential goes ex-dividend that last week in May towards the 23rd of the month. Check out that exclusive offer for Seeking Alpha Premium with the link below, or click on the video to the right for the dividend kings that will never let you down. Seven stocks with 50 plus years of increasing dividends. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.